Hey everybody, how you doing? Glad to have you here. This is my first YouTube video for my HVAC training uh, YouTube and also my website. And uh, before I get started doing the training, I really wanted to give my appreciation for uh, heat and air, the history of it, and really how it's impacted our entire way of living. And so I did a lot of research here, put this presentation together. There's a whole lot more out there uh, on this subject, of course, but I put some highlights together and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's get this started. Um, just want you to know, I bet you there's stuff in this presentation you never knew or actually thought about. So let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. My name is Joey Henderson, and I have been in the field for 34 years. I started in the Navy uh, in Orlando, Florida. I was a machinist mate uh, on a nuclear submarine called the USS Greenling. And uh, I did that. When I got out, I went into business for myself for 15 years. I had two companies. One was called Comfort Zone. The other one was called HVAC Design Services. And when I sold that business, the first one, I became a technical rep and trainer for Carrier and then later on for Train. So I was the trainer and the tech rep for all the state of South Carolina. So I went on job sites, I did technical training, and I did uh, tech support on the phone. And my love and my passion was helping technicians on the phone and then going out to the sites. Um, as a company owner in the past, I was a technician and an installer before I grew and got more people. So I really enjoyed still staying out in the field. After I got through doing carrier and train, um, I started a job with the nuclear plants here in South Carolina and I was become an HVAC uh, mechanic for the nuclear plants. And that lasted for three years because the site never actually got online, unfortunately. So that ended. I took up the job uh, with uh, Midlands Technical College being the HVAC uh, program coordinator. And I've been teaching HVAC at Midlands Tech part-time for about the last 25, 30 years. And so now I run the program and thoroughly enjoy it. I am Nate certified. I'm also a Nate Proctor, and I also have a Nate testing organization for anyone that would like to get some Nate training. And any training I do, you can get Nate credit hours for as well. I do hold a master's HVAC license. I do have a state mechanical license. I'm on the board with the Heat and Air Association here in South Carolina. And then I also have an associate's degree from Midlands Tech. I'm also a HVAC consultant. I am a presenter, professional educator, I've been around various conventions teaching AHR, ABM, uh, which is a uh, industrial commercial franchise organization, SCALT. I've been to the iConnect Bahama Training Center there, did training at that place uh, in the Bahamas. Uh, I'm going to be training at the ESCO convention, HVAC Excellence, did it last year. I'll be doing it this year. And I taught at the HVAC school for Brian Orr. And also, I'll be teaching for SP Academy, which is also another commercial and industrial uh, education uh, franchise for uh, industrial commercial contractors. Okay, so that's who I am. I will not go through that spill again on every single video. <laughs> now, so what is air conditioning? Now, most people, when they think of air conditioning, they think of their, about their thermostats, and of course, think about their vents or grills and their outside unit. And for most people, that's it. That's air conditioning. But of course, we know it's a whole lot more than that. It deunifies the air. It humidifies the air, ventilates it, pressurizes it, cools it, heats it, filters it, circulates it. So when we talk about uh, air conditioning, usually we're just saying it's cooling. But really, it's all of this. It's everything that we do to condition the air. And as HVAC uh, mechanics and technicians, we deal with all this all the time, anytime that unit kicks on. So let me give you a little brief history of this air conditioning career that we have all stepped into. Love, hate. It's uh, made us a good living. And uh, I always, I've never left it. It always keeps drawing me in deeper and deeper. So here we go. So it all started with a big bang. Okay. Now it wasn't this big bang, but it was actually this big bang right here. 
there was an attempted assassination on President James Garfield. That was July 2nd, 1881. He got shot in the back. Well, while he was trying to be operated on, taken care of, it was very hot and very humid. So a group of naval engineers were ordered to develop a cooling system to keep him cool, to try to keep him from dying while they were working on him. The way they did this was amazing. They melted four tons of ice a day and used a mechanical auger, okay? And they churned out ice. And as it melted, it would trickle down onto uh, terry cloth rags. And those ice cold terry cloth rags, they blew a fan across it, threw a duck into his room. And that, as far as I can tell, was the true first uh, central ducted cooling system. Now, there's been all kinds of ancient uh, cooling systems using water and fans, but this was ice blown, uh, air blown over ice cold rags into his room. Over 58 days, it equated to 500 million pounds of ice that was literally brought down from the frozen rivers at that time. So there you have it. As far as I can tell, that was the first central cooling system, and it was there to keep him going. Now, later on, there was Willis Carrier, uh, normally called the father of air conditioning, and in 1902, he invented it. What's really neat uh, is that he was standing on a train platform. He was waiting for a train, and the steam came boiling up as that train pulled over. He was having a problem. He couldn't condition the air in the building, which he was trying to do for a printing press, to dry out the air. The problem was that all the air that came in was from the outside. And he didn't know, him and his engineering team, never knew what the conditions of the outside air would be. So they didn't know what the conditions of the outside air would be. They didn't know how to, uh, you know, use a cooling system to dry out the air, to remove the moisture from the air. So as he stood there on the platform and all that steam came up, he got an epiphany. If he controlled the condition of the air entering the evaporator coil, then he could control the air leaving the evaporator coil. So what he did is he literally completely saturated the incoming air. So he knew that it was 100% saturated. And with that, they designed a cooling system that would remove the moisture so it would deliver the proper humidity on the other side, probably lower than 50% in the room. And therefore, they had a printing press and the papers weren't sticking. So that's how he got started. He really had nothing to do with cooling the room. His goal was to dry it out so that the printing press could keep working. But it got expanded from there. From there, he created with his team centralized cooling. And they started doing the return duct. So it was an enclosed circulating system. And the theaters were the first place to get it. So here you go. There's a sign right there. Cooled by Refrigeration Carrier Engineering Corporation. And now people could actually go to the movies in the summer. Okay. Before then, they could only go in the movies during the good, cool weather. But in the summer, no movies, hot, humid, ain't going to work. Now they could go all year round. And as far as I can tell, this is where the term summer blockbuster came from. Now we could go to the movies in the summer. After that, it moved into hospitals and it moved into pharmaceutical areas. And we started getting cooling really more in the commercial side. And then later on in the mid 60s, we started getting air conditioning in homes because of air conditioning. We were able to move westward and live in areas that were uninhabitable because of the heat and the humidity. Arizona and Florida and Nevada, those places really could not grow until they got air conditioning. Once air conditioning hit the homes, boom, there was an explosion in those areas that we take for granted today, of course. So without air conditioning, 
Okay, without that career that you and I love, you and I know, and that we're trying to get more people into it because we know we're desperately needing for technicians, there would be no Las Vegas. There would be no Disney World. There would be no beautiful beach resorts and hotels that we could go and stay at, play on the beach, and then go back in a nice, cool area. None of that would be possible. And we could not go to the movies in the summer. What a terrible life that would be. So here we go. That's what we start off with. We take it for granted, but because of air conditioning, we got that. Without air conditioning, no way. So what about refrigeration? Well, we think of refrigeration, we think of ice, think of ice cream, think of cold milk, eggs, vegetables, a refrigerator stocked full of stuff. Take it for granted. We open it up, there it is, ready to go. Get fruit from all over the world, vegetables from all over the world. Why? How? Refrigeration. So let's do a little brief history of refrigeration. Let's talk about ice. Well, not that ice. Let's talk about a different ice cube. How about this ice cube? So back in the day, by around 1800, people actually harvest ice out of the rivers. Okay, as you can see right here, we've got them going. These guys, of course, are, uh, I don't think DHEC was around during those days, but these guys are cutting these ice blocks and they're pulling them in. So they cut them out of the river, they pull them down here, sort them out, and then, guess what? They put them up here in storage. And guess what this was called? An ice house. You ever heard of ice house beer? That's where the name came from. And ice houses came in all kinds of um, uh, shapes and sizes. Some were in the ground, some were above ground. They would pack them full of uh, sawdust and straw to try to keep them from thawing out. They had a wood to insulate it. A lot of your original uh, refrigerators were wood lined. And that was what the way they insulated it with. So there literally was ice men that collected ice and it would float it down river and then be stored so that we could have it in the summer. And here's what we got. We actually had ice service. You ever heard of the ice man? Well, literally they would come and uh, bring ice to the house. People would have these little stickers in their window, like a little diamond. And it would have on there the information on what size ice they needed for their particular refrigerator. And here he is. The ice man would come. He would have his ice in that bag right there. And if you see right here, he would stick it in here. Now, if you've ever heard some old timers say, maybe your grandmother, grandfather, they would talk about the ice box. Well, that's what this was. This is literally your original ice box right here. They would stick the ice in here. And as it melted, it would cool, you know, all the stuff in the refrigerator here or in the ice box. And then it would drain into this pan. He would come back, put in a new block of ice. And that was the way it went. So there you go. There's the ice man and there's the ice box. And here's a really nice picture of one. And again, you can go into uh, really cool websites for industrial history. Look up air conditioner refrigeration and see all this. Now, what else do we have in refrigeration that we take for granted? How about road transport refrigeration? All these right here, these are refrigerated transportation boxes. Unbelievable. Trucks are refrigerated. Tractor trailers are refrigerated. And because of that, we get fresh food to the market all the time. We don't have to go out there and get it. We don't have to go across the world to get it. Shows up right here in our grocery stores. And just for your knowledge, it is a fast-growing business. And so if you're looking to get into the refrigeration business, check out transportation refrigeration. They're hungry like the rest of us. And here's the growth of it and expected to grow again into the billion dollar industry. And without refrigeration, look at this, no fresh vegetables, no ice cold drinks, no fresh steaks, no milkshakes. So good thing we do it. I like the steaks myself. Oh, and the cold drinks. Get this, fun fact. Did you know even Eskimos use refrigerators? That's right. Guess why they need them? You're not going to believe it. It's to keep their food warm. <laughs> they have to use a refrigerator 
and it insulates the food and it keeps it at 40 degrees. If they didn't have refrigerators, their food would freeze. Now, you know, they would bury them in the ground and put them in kind of like an ice house itself, but they actually buy refrigerators to keep their food warm. Fun fact. And don't forget this, refrigeration is in the medical field. These are specialized medical refrigerators that have to keep your medicine at a certain temperature. These are highly sophisticated, extremely important. And if you get into this business, wow, okay? These are really high dollar. But think about it. Without refrigeration, we couldn't keep our medicine in the right condition. Uh, we're doing a whole lot better now with vaccines, uh, with any kind of medication you need. And these are uh, extremely specialized. So look into it. But that's another thing. Without us, we wouldn't have this. Now this is really cool that I found out about. This is called clean room technology. This is where, and it's a very sophisticated setup here, okay? But you can go and watch on, just type in clean room technology. Great, some great YouTubes on it. But what it is, this room is designed with a highly, uh, speci very specialized ventilation system. And this room, all the air is forced down and filtered out constantly so that there's zero dust in the air, no particles, and this is where they make the microchip, okay? Without air conditioning technology, we couldn't have a clean room. And without a clean room, you cannot have a microchip. So thank you, HVAC career people, for cell phones, computers, any digital electronic device that has a microchip only because of HVAC. How about that? And without air conditioned refrigeration technology, we could not do underwater submarine exploration. What do you think they're doing in that little bub right there? That's air conditioning, keeping them alive and cool and dehumidified. How about this? See this spaceman right here? You know what's on the back right there? That big old ginormous backpack? An air conditioner. See, the deal is, is that when they seal this dude up in this ginormous suit, it's all heavy. His body heat would kill him. He would cook himself in there. So they got this air conditioner in the back. He's got water tubes that run all through that suit. And that air conditioning is keeping chilled water going through that suit to keep him cool. No computers and no airplane travel. Without air conditioning, you could not go up inside that ginormous hollow metal tube and get that close to the sun and live, all right? Unless you want to break the windows out. We know what happens. Everybody gets sucked out the window. So air conditioning is essential. Without air conditioning, say bye-bye to airplane travel. So one thing we don't want to lose is Lacey now. She needs her air conditioning too. Tell me you don't have an air conditioning unit for your dog. Now, where would we be without all this? What would the modern world look like with air conditioning refrigeration? Well, there would be no jobs. Thousands of men and women wouldn't have jobs. Engineers, technicians, installers part store owners, part store employees, and educators. There would be none of us without air conditioning. Instead, I think we'd probably go back and looking like this guy right here. So there you have it. A brief history of air conditioning, the importance of it, and the part you play in keeping this society going in its current modern age, not going back to the Stone Age. I appreciate you guys watching this. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you like it, hit the like button, hit subscribe. If you haven't, hit the notification bell when I send out another one. This is jojohvac.com. Go there. I'll have some more stuff on that area. And there's my email if you ever want to get in touch with me. Y'all have a good day. Take care.